How black boxes are made, how do they do it? One of the flight data recorders from the Lion Air aircraft that crashed into the Java Sea on October 29, 2018, with 189 people on board, was eventually discovered by Indonesian divers. The flight data recorder should provide investigators with some clues on the cause of the two-month-old Boeing 737 MAX 8 disaster shortly after takeoff, according to AP reports. During the flight, the voice recorder should also capture the voices of the cockpit crew, engine noises, instrumentation warnings, and other audio. When a plane crashes, there are typically a lot of unsolved questions. Investigators therefore look to the aircraft's flight data recorder FDR and cockpit voice recorder CVR, sometimes referred to as black boxes, for information. The National Transportation Safety Board's NTSB safety investigators start looking for the aircraft's black boxes as soon as an aircraft accident occurs in the United States. Unfortunately though, answers aren't always quick. Finding the black box from Air France Flight 447, which crashed into the South Atlantic on June 1, 2009, took investigators over two years. In addition to surviving the collision, the box had been immersed in corrosive, salty waters for about 13,000 feet. Ultimately, the data demonstrated that a stall that ultimately led to the catastrophe was caused in part by a pilot mistake. These recording devices, which range in price from $10,000 to $15,000 per, provide information about the activities that took place right before the disaster. The two kinds of black boxes, their ability to withstand collisions, and their retrieval and analysis will all be covered in this article. The black boxes start. Numerous microphones that listen in on flight crew communications are installed in the cockpit of practically all commercial aircraft. Additionally, these mics record any background noise in the cockpit, including knocks, thuds, and switches being thrown. The aircraft's cockpit may have as many as four microphones, all of which are linked to the cockpit voice recorder CVR. The CVR receives audio signals from microphones, digitizes them, and stores them. Additionally, there is a device in the cockpit known as the Related Control Unit that pre-amplifies audio before sending it to the CVR. To capture audio alerts and other sounds, the four microphones are positioned in the pilot's, co-pilot's, and third crew member's headsets if there is one as well as close to the middle of the cockpit. The past 30 minutes of audio are stored on the majority of magnetic tape CVRs. Every half an hour, a continuous tape loop completes a cycle. The oldest content is replaced by newly recorded stuff. Solid-state storage-based CVRs have a two-hour audio recording capacity. Solid-state recorders record over old material, just like magnetic tape recorders do. Constructed to last, a plane crash is a violent event. The Crash Survivable Memory Units CSMUs of the flight data recorders and cockpit voice recorders are the sole equipment to survive in many of these incidents. The remainder of the recorder's internal parts and chassis are usually damaged. The CSMU is a big cylinder that fastens to the recorder's flat section. This apparatus is designed to endure intense heat, startling collisions, and tremendous pressure. The CSMU is housed inside a rectangular box and earlier magnetic tape recorders. The CSMU in a solid-state black box insulates and safeguards the stack of memory boards using three layers of materials. Here is a closer look at the materials that act as a barrier for the memory boards, working our way outward from the innermost barrier. Housing made of aluminum, the stack of memory cards is surrounded by a thin layer of aluminum. Insulation for high temperatures. This 1 inch 2.54 cm thick dry silica material offers high temperature thermal protection. This protects the memory boards in the event of post-accident fire. Shell made of stainless steel. An approximately 0.25 inch 0.64 cm thick stainless steel cast shell encloses the high temperature insulating material. This outer armor can also be made of titanium. The significance of these reinforced housings is enormous. All flight data would be lost in the absence of proper safeguards. In order to ensure that data remains secure, engineers vigorously test their black boxes to see whether their products are capable of withstanding severe misuse. A Crash Survivable Memory Unit Test Aviation recorders, despite being referred to as black boxes, are bright orange in color. After an accident, this unique color and the reflective tape strips affixed to the outside of the recorders aid investigators in locating the black boxes. When a plane lands in the water, these are really useful. The phrase black box may have come from one of two sources. While some say it alludes to the chairing that happens in post-accident fires, others assume it's because early recorders were painted black. Black boxes have an underwater location beacon ULB, in addition to paint and reflective tape. A little cylindrical object is nearly always seen attached to one end of a black box when you look at a photograph of one. This cylinder serves as both a beacon and a carrying handle. 
In the event that an aircraft crashes into the ocean, the beacon emits an ultrasonic pulse that is inaudible to the human ear, but easily picked up by sonar and acoustic finding devices. A bull's eye-shaped submergence sensor is located on the beacon's side. The beacon turns on when water comes into contact with the sensor. The beacon can transmit sound up to 14,000 feet, 4,267 meters underground and emits pulses at 37.5 kilohertz Ks. The beacon pings once every second for 30 days after it starts. The battery that powers this beacon has a six-year shelf life. Rarely a high-impact collision may cause the beacon to break off. When a black box is found in the United States, it is taken to the National Transportation Safety Board's NTSB Computer Labs. To prevent additional harm to the recording media, extra care is necessary when moving these devices. To prevent drying out in the event of a water mishap, recorders are submerged in a cooler of water. The black boxes of the future. Future advancements in black box technology could take many different forms. First and foremost, there is no video recording of cockpit activities in the present systems. Many pilots adamantly oppose allowing video, claiming that such systems invade their privacy and that the data capturing already in place is adequate for accident investigators. The National Transportation Safety Board has been making fruitless attempts for years to incorporate video capabilities into black box systems. When it comes to investigating aviation mishaps, the NTSB is adamant that there is never too much information. Video recording is still on hold as of right now. The technology, however, is more than prepared. For instance, every helicopter manufactured by Airbus has a Vision 1000 system installed. Mounted behind the pilot's head, the Vision 1000 camera captures four frames per second of video of the pilot's movements, the cockpit, and the area beyond the windshield. It merely requires power and a GPS connection to activate, and it weighs roughly half a pound. Not just video has encountered opposition from the existing quo. The Save Aviation and Flight Enhancement Act, which would mandate not one but two flight recorders, including one that automatically ejects itself from the aircraft in the event of an incident, has been promoted by some lawmakers since 2002. These self-ejecting recorders are less likely to sustain catastrophic destruction and are simpler to find. However, Congress has not yet approved the law. Black boxes aren't limited to aircraft. They are currently incorporated into a wide variety of automobiles. You might not even be aware that you have one in your automobile. Event data recorders EDRs, which track the same type of data as airplane black boxes, are found in about 90% of new cars. Accident investigators can and do utilize EDR data to better explain wrecks, and occasionally to assign fault after an accident. The EDR is supposedly designed to maintain and monitor the car's safety system. They might be overlooked when it comes to black boxes attached to airplanes. Shortly, airplanes might just broadcast all of their vital data straight to a ground-based station rather than recording to a box. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Your support helps us keep creating more informative and exciting content for you. Thanks for watching.